What's up gamers? How you doing? It's John. And in this video, I'll be taking a closer look at two of the latest one quarter inch scale mini arcades by Numskull. I'm a big fan of this line of, of art mini arcades that Numskull has been doing for quite some time now. They start off with the original Pac-Man, they did Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, among others. Um, this is the latest one. They're actually shipping out uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ones now. Uh, so I'm very excited to get those. There's both the original Turtles as well as Turtles in Time. And those are also done in quarter scale. These aren't your cheap knockoff plastic arcades, right? So let's let me get that straight out of the way, right? This is high quality, made from wood. These are a complete replication of the original arcade. So imagine taking the blown up huge version of the arcade, 300 pounds or more, right? Oftentimes, and you're shrinking it down to a quarter scale. So I kind of like to think of like cutting and construct the kids. If that were to happen, this is, this is the outcome of that, right? Now, the cool thing about this one, the one to my right, Space Invaders. Classic game. I think most of us gamers have heard of Space Invaders. It's an iconic game. One of the early games that came out in the arcade from Japan by Taito. Back in the day, I used to call it Taito. I don't know if it's potato or tomato or whatever, but it's Taito, I supposedly. Uh, but this was published by Midway in North America. So these arcades, both in this one, by the way, to my left, is part two. In North America, we refer to it as Space Invaders Deluxe, right? This game, this, these both cabinets took several years to produce by Numskull. And the reason why it took so long to produce is because they wanted to get the exact replication of the playing experience in the arcade using what they call the Pepper's ghosting effect. For those who may not know what that is, it's a reflection off the, like a, a window, uh, makes looking like it appear like a 3D effect. Super cool. It's what like really stood apart going to the arcade, the pose you playing this game on your Atari 2600 at home. Right. When Space Invaders came out in Japan, for example, 45 years ago, 1978, by the way, it makes me feel old saying that, <laughs> uh, it caused a shortage of yen in the country of Japan, right? Because it was such a high demand. Midway published this in North America. So the Midway version, which the one I grew up playing in North America and the US, uh, among you know Canada as well, uh, for those in Canada, uh, is different, right? It's slightly different. This uses joysticks moving left or right, where the North American version that I grew up playing had the buttons, right? Uh, the artwork is also subtly different, right? There was a little rise to it uh, in the North American version. They had a little different uh, design. Not a huge deal. Now, Numskull is a company based in UK, and because of that, we're getting the true version of the title version, right? We're not getting the, the midway version of the game. Gameplay essentially is the same, right? No matter what, okay? I'm not quite sure how many they, they produced. I can tell you I did pick up a limited edition version that was signed by the creator, which is awesome. Uh, and you can see in the back, uh, signed. This is one of 78 that they, they made, hence the year, 1978. They also did this, offered a signed version of this one as well. Only 79 of these were available. So again, the year that was released, 1979. Um, so without any further ado, let's take a closer look at uh, the artwork, take a closer look at what the gameplay looks like on these miniature scale. I'll put a link to where you can pick one of these up if you're interested. Thanks for watching guys and let's take a closer look. Okay, before I show you a closer look at each arcade cabinet, I do wanna show you something cool that I got as a pre-order bonus. I did this through Just Geek. Came with a one quarter scale stool, which is awesome. Now, it doesn't look like it on camera, it doesn't look like it on picture, but this is plastic, hard plastic. I'm a little disappointed in that, to be honest with you. I know New Wave Toys, for example, the competitor that do, they do mini one six scale arcades, they had offered mini stools as well, and those are cloth and they have they have cushion. This is hard plastic, and even the this is kind of cheap plastic as well. In my opinion, not the best quality. It looks cool, and it's it's awesome, like sitting in front of the arcade for your display to have it there, which is cool. But it did come with a really nice coin as a bonus to like a Space Invaders coin. So I think that's really cool. Uh, each one had its own available for pre-order. Uh, I did order it for part two. I've not gotten the mail yet as of filming this video, uh, but let's take a closer look at each individual cabinet and go from there, thanks. Okay, first version I'm gonna take a look at is the Space Invaders one, right? Uh, the Taito version. You can see here the controls I mentioned before, you got the left, uh, left right joystick different than the two buttons that we're used to in North America. That's okay, it plays identical. You got the player one, player two. This is your fire button. Uh, here's how you insert coins. You just hit the button here uh, to insert credits, right? And you can kind of see the side art. Awesome, amazing. Even they've got the, the metal hinges here, which is really cool. The vents, they've really done a good job recreating this. Um, they even added, I'll show you the, how well you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but you can kind of see the Pepper's ghosting effect, it's, it's kind of 3D, it's a reflection. You can see closely, it's gonna be hard to film. 
but the screen is actually monitor is actually down there reflecting that's exactly how it was in the original arcade and there's actually a blue black light as well so they recreated that you can see that so really the attention detail is pretty amazing let's look at the back of this as well so here is the back and it's signed by uh tomohiro nishikado uh and this is one of 78 so it's number 51 or individually numbered of 78. Did a really nice cool autograph in japanese with the different characters i love that they even added like the hands where you put your hand when you want to move it here's the other side on the back you have your power on off switch usb-c charge uh, it does run off of lithium batteries so it is uh rechargeable batteries which is nice and there's a there's a wheel there for volume control okay you can also see here there's a placard from numskull space invaders and you can see limited edition it says on the back i don't know how you can see that but it says limited edition one of 78. so very cool plaque on that so that makes it limited edition just geek is a website i picked this up and that will ship to uh, north america also these are available on amazon just so you know here in north america so that's cool too let's take a closer look at space invaders part two also known as space invaders in north america as deluxe okay here is space invaders part two aka deluxe subtle differences in gameplay they've added a little more colors again there's a reflection on the screen the monitor right uh same same controls you can see the panels are different in design so this is part two you can see part one also uh being different buttons and controls obviously are the same though right just the artwork uh artwork is also different it's kind of an or orangish red opposed to blue this one is not limited edition so you can see it just says Space Invader and just talks about Numskull, Manufactured, Rubber Road, uh, Limited. But they do offer this in signed. I think they still have some of these available signed. This one is not available signed. It's sold out. Okay. Same controls in the back, as I showed you before. Uh, let's boot this thing on. Love the marquee. Lit up marquee, which is great. And let's power this. Let's turn this thing on, put some credits, and show you some gameplay. Okay, I'm going to show you some gameplay also want to add that it does come with obviously USB-C cable to USB-C and it's almost a two meter long cable so it's plenty long in terms of length goes let's add some credits and we'll hit player one actually before I do that I want to show you you can go to it does come with instructions too which is great and it has uh, option where you can go to uh, the dip switch setting so I'm going to turn it off we're going to turn it on we're going to hit player hold player one and player two at the same time Here's a boot up. And both versions do this. It's gonna load, you'll see here in a second. Here's the dip switch settings, right? So you can have, you can change, you can have the invaders fire or not. You can change it to, um, you can do it like, if they don't fire, you can make it easier, you can do invincibility, which is kind of cheap, right? Uh, bolt speed, how fast they go, auto fire modes. You can just hold down for fire if you want. You can turn the CRT on. We'll do that. Make there's some scan lines, which is cool. And let's go start game. Now, if you've never played Space Invaders, it's a very simple game, right? It came out in 1978, so kind of right after Star Wars came out. So science fiction was huge. And this game, the goal is to get the invaders before they come get you, right? So very simple. Let's go add a credit. Meek is very simple. I'm not sure how well you can see the reflection or not. Let's see if I can turn it up. That's max volume, which is play, playing loud enough, to be honest. Now they do speed up, and there's saucer that will fly across the screen occasionally. You get extra points. You have those barrier walls can protect you for a while, but they eventually go away. Object is just clear the screen without getting it yourself. Oh, there's a saucer. Got it. You see the sound effect there? You can't hit the bullets that are coming at you, right? To protect you. But as they get closer, they speed up for sure. And it gets more, definitely more difficult. And the music is almost like Jaws, where it's like very kind of same thing over and over again, but it speeds up to the space uh, pace of the aliens. Oh, I got hit. 
I'm not sure if the camera's really picking up that 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 peppers of ghosting effect I was talking about before, but it is reflected, right? You see the the, the moon or whatever that is, 3D effect. Oh man. You can see the, the music starting to speed up a little bit. Not very good. So I'm playing through the camera, so it's a little challenging uh, in that regard. Let's show you Space Invaders Part 2, aka Deluxe. Okay, here's Part 2. Uh, we're going to add some credits. Honestly, I don't see a huge difference with the CRT. I know there's subtle scan lines. I don't think you can necessarily see it, the camera. But it looks cool. Uh, I definitely appreciate the reflective um, effect, the 3D effect that they do. I think that's really cool. Add some credits. Same gameplay here. Uh, it does keep score a little bit differently. It shows you kind of high score. And there's a lot more color. You see this. The invaders are now multicolor, which is different. The moon has uh, more of a development to it, too. It's different. It's subtle. I mean, if you want a real arcade, right? The actual Space Invaders arcade, you're going to look to spend a couple thousand dollars on it, right? Because uh, it's a classic. I'm not sure how many they made or how many were produced or how many are still along around 45 years later. But I know it's immensely popular in all over the world. Missed it. Ah. This is one of the first, Space Invaders 1 anyways, one of the first games that was immensely popular in the arcades, right? Arcades would open up just specifically to have this game. This predates Pac-Man, which is also a very popular game. And this is the time when a lot of Japanese companies uh, would, you know, make other companies or not make, but they would contract or license other companies to release in North America. Like so, you know, Midway also did Pac-Man, even though it was Namco that, uh, that created it, right? So um, great game. Uh, love it. Let me, let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you for subscribing. Leave a comment. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. And of course, game on.